Arkansas Sam Pittman will be next. The Hogs will host UAB on Saturday at 315 Central on SEC Network. Uh, to ask a question, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. And uh, Coach, while we wait on those questions, if you could take a moment to comment on your team as you enter this week's game versus UAB. Yeah, we're, we're excited to get home. You know, we haven't, first two were on the road and decided to get back in front of our uh, near capacity crowd and and uh, uh, and listen to the call of the hogs. UAB has a, a very good team, a great head coach and Coach Dilfer and uh, bring back a coordinator that played here and Alex Mortensen, uh, their offensive coordinator, have high respect for him and what he's doing over there. And uh, But we're excited to get home and, and uh, play UAB. All right, Coach, we'll start you off with Tom Murphy of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Hey, good morning, Sam. Um, I, I know you guys do like a lot of analytical study. Uh, turnover margin, what's the importance of that and, and for you guys to uh, get that turned around this season? Well, um, if you have, and it just goes up, the percentages go up as um, the differential in turnovers goes up or down, uh, or excuse me, as it goes up. But uh, basically you'll win 80% of your games if you have less turnovers than your opponent. And uh, uh, very, very huge statistic. Um, we work awful hard of it. We had um, obviously with a pick and then a touchdown off of it because, you know, our defense had had basically, well, they did. They shut them out in the first half. Uh, big momentum turn uh, change as well and then on the punt as well. But um, we work on it each and every day. And, and uh, uh, unfortunately, sometimes things happen. But uh, – uh, we certainly uh, talk about it a lot and we work on it a lot. So we know that we know the fewer turnovers is you have, you have less than your opponent, you have at least an 80% chance to win the game. Uh, talking to your players last night about Trent Dilfer, they, I think they were kind of aware of him, but not fully. But I, I wonder if you've um, crossed paths and what your um, knowledge of, of Trent Dilfer is. Yeah, you know, uh, I obviously know who he is and all the success that he's had. Um, I have spoke with him and and uh, and talked to him uh, just a couple of times uh, over the telephone, but um, that's that's about the only thing I know about him except for his amazing uh, playing career and and certainly uh, the fine job that he's doing as a as a coach. Next is Wes Pruitt of Four Star Sports Media. Hey, Coach. When you look at the uh, topic right now, discussion for Arkansas, a lot of it is on, on the offensive side with Bobby Petrino and the high-powered offense. But speak a little bit on Travis Williams and how you think this defense has performed through two weeks. Well, I think both sides warranted great conversation. Um, obviously, uh, we're doing some great things offensively, but the way that we're playing defensive football – uh, especially for the first seven quarters of of the year, uh, we have have Travis and, and his group over there have done an outstanding job, along with the players. Obviously, um, they're they're flying around the football. We're limited big plays. Um, obviously, Oklahoma State had a trick play of a flea flicker, a reverse flea flicker that got us. Um, but you know, we're just talking about continuing to. We let them, you know, they they earn uh, touchdowns uh, in the fourth quarter uh, inside the red zone. We have to stop that. But other than that, we're, we're playing very hard, limited mistakes, uh, doing a good job of tackling. I thought we did a good job last week of tackling and and uh, limiting their uh, outstanding back to uh, minimal yards. And, and uh, you're right, uh, Travis has got them excited to play. They're playing hard, tackling well. We have to get more turnovers, and if I had anything negative to say, we'd, we've got to get more turnovers. Coach, on a follow-up to that, uh, when you look at it on the offensive side of things, talk a little bit about what your thoughts are on Taylor Green so far and how's he, how he's been able to really buy into this offense. 
Uh, you know, I wish I was surprised about his performance. I'm not. I felt like I felt like he would do what he's doing now. I think he'll continue to get better uh, as as the season uh, progresses. But um, and he just has such great leadership skills and uh, what he does. He exudes confidence, and therefore it goes, you know, completely across the whole entire offense and the football team. Uh, but he's making good decisions. Uh, even the one that was picked, you know, he got hit on it. So that, that ball fluttered on him. Um, but, you know, he's made some really good decisions. He's good on his run run reads. Um, he's getting the ball out of his hand well. And, and he's had as good a practice as I've seen this week uh, with accuracy of the ball, uh, driving the football. But... You know, a lot of that goes back to uh, he, he was a good player. I think he can be a great player with the tutelage of Bobby Petrino. I think um, that's helped him as well. Thanks, Coach. Next, we'll go to Sean Girard, CBS Sports. Hey, Coach. Of course, you know, you have such a strong offensive line background. I'm, I'm curious, when you look around college football right now, do you feel like in the portal era that offensive lines have maybe taken a step back at times? And I'm curious kind of why you think that might be. Well, I don't, I don't know if yeah, the, the bottom line is, is that if you keep a group of individuals together and let's say most people will recruit five offensive linemen per year, let's say you hit on four of them. And then the next year you hit on another four. Well, that gives you eight and that's about what you need. Everybody wants more than that. But if you had eight and you continue to keep them together and develop them, boy, you could have you a really solid, uh, good offensive line. But what happens now with the portal is you'll lose three of them. You'll lose four of them. And therefore you're bringing in new guys and the cohesiveness and and uh, things like that are not as good as what they used to be. Offensive linemen play well when they're playing together well. And as you develop them over the years together, you should have a stronger and better offensive line. I remember when I was at Georgia and I was losing guys, you know, in the third year, uh, you know, and they, you know, they're going first, first round and second, whatever, they was going high. And, uh, it hurt us because we only had them for three years. Well, imagine now you only have them for one. Um, then it gets difficult to to manage that cohesiveness. So I think that's where offensive lines are getting hurt a little bit uh, in this day and age. When you are talking to, I guess, guys who are younger on your roster, I mean, how difficult is it these days to tell them, hey, you know what, this this might be a two, three-year process, but please stick it out. Well, it's, it's difficult because you have finances in, involved. That, you know, if it, if it wasn't that, you know, and basically you're paying the kids that are out on the field and uh, obviously more more and, and all that. So um, it, it's difficult. Um, uh, relationships help with that. Uh, I don't know if it overrides finances. And uh, so I think we have a really good relationship, really good uh, cohesiveness in our team between um, coach and player. But at the same time, um, and a lot of it has to do with parents, you know, how strong the parent is and how how much they understand the process. Did dad play? Did mom play? How much they understand sticking with a program uh, that can develop you uh, over the long haul will be the best thing for you. But um it's difficult. Those conversations are difficult, but, you know, uh, I don't know how to do it any different than say where they're at and where you think they can go and, and then go from there. And then ultimately this decision to stay or leave is theirs. But um, I think leaving sometimes puts a kid back, you know, if he's getting developed the right way at, the, at his current university. If we have time for one more, we'll go with Bob Holt of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Hey, Sam, I know the, the secondary is a little banged up start the week. Just wonder yeah. if you had an update on, I guess, Cuddy and Hudson and how you said, I think you said Braxton was dealing with some tendonitis too. Yeah. Well, I, you know, uh, Brax hasn't practiced much this week. Uh, we're going to uh, check him out 
got a bone bruise and we're going to check him out a little bit more today. Uh, HUD, he's doubtful. Uh, I, I don't know that he'll, he'll be ready this week. Uh, Cuddy, uh, I think he'll be fine, but, um, Braxton's probably still wait, wait and see. I probably know more about it after the day's practice, to be honest with you, Bob, and then Cuddy will go and, and HUD is very, very doubtful. Thanks. Thank you. Coach, thank you for your time today. Thank you, guys.